You're about to discover everything you need to know about the Paul Gauguin cruise ship. Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge, and this is another of my tips for travelers. I'm currently on board the Paul Gauguin ship, and I want to share with you everything that I discovered and saw and learned about this cruise ship. The Paul Gauguin ship is the only ship within Paul Gauguin cruises. It operates out of Papeti in Tahiti, offers seven, 10, and 14 night cruises around French Polynesia, focusing particularly on the Society Islands. It's a luxury ship, it's a small cruise ship, and it was specifically designed to cruise around the French Polynesian Islands. It's a pretty small ship, it only has seven passenger decks, it has 332 guests, 217 crews, a very high crew to passenger ratio. It has 166 suites, ranging from big owner suites down to Portal cabin suites. Over 70% of the cabins on board have a balcony, which I think is really important if you're cruising this beautiful part of the world because the scenery is remarkable and amazing. And you're docked a lot of the time, sometimes overnight, in these beautiful islands. And having a balcony is fantastic to get the incredible views. The premium cabins have butler service as part of the whole luxury experience. It also has one wheelchair accessible stateroom and some staterooms can accommodate three guests, which is really important if you're traveling with family because if your child is under 17 and shares a stateroom with you, that child actually travels for free. Another important thing to note about the Paul Gauguin is it's largely all-inclusive. Food, your accommodation, your gratuities, your drinks, the kids' program, use of the water sport facilities, your snorkeling equipment. The only extras on board are excursions, Wi-Fi, and of course, if you do things like send stuff to the laundry, use the medical center, go to the spa, or buy things in the shop. Let's take a deeper look at the facilities on board, starting with dining. There are three key dining venues on board, so a lot of choice considering it's a small ship. All of the dining venues are open-seated dining, and they're all included within the fare. The main dining room, which is only open in the evenings, which is La Toile, it's a fabulous space, I really like it. And the great thing about the menu in there is if you're vegetarian or vegan like me, you have a special section which is vegetarian and most of those options are vegan, so that's great. But a huge menu, lots of choice, very good quality food. With the two alternative dining venues, they both operate as a buffet breakfast and a buffet lunch, and in the evening they become specialty dining. The first of those is La Veranda. They have a great breakfast spread in here, a great lunch spread, and there'll often be different themes by day, so Greek, Polynesian. In the evening, La Veranda, it really turns into a sort of a French cuisine-focused dining, where it has one part of the menu, which is sort of like a tasting menu, and then it has an a la carte menu. The other is Le Grill, which is actually hugely popular because it's up on the pool deck and largely open. So very, very popular, as you can imagine, cruising through the region, great views. Breakfast and lunch is buffet. It serves afternoon tea in here. And as the name would suggest, in the evening, it becomes a more grill-based venue. So grilled fish, grilled meat. Those two, you just have to make reservations for La Veranda and Le Grill. There is also a 24-hour room service menu with a pretty big choice, which you can also order on the interactive television. So what other facilities are there on board? Well, first of all, let's take a look at lounges and bars. One of the most popular is the piano bar, and linked to that is the casino. This is really popular for before dinner drinks and also after dinner drinks. They have a pianist playing in here at certain hours, as of course the name would suggest. And as I mentioned, you have a small casino with a roulette table, a blackjack table, and a room with a number of machines. The other really popular venue and bar is known as La Palette. Here they actually have an early riser and healthy options breakfast. It's up on deck eight so at the rear of the ship, so it has great views. It's a very popular place, particularly at sail out time. And again, in the evenings, they have things like karaoke and a band playing in here. Out on the pool deck, there's a beautiful pool and lots of space to sit. And there's also a bar up there. In terms of activities, I already mentioned that you have the pool. There's a huge, big sun deck area. There's often organized activities out there. If you walk around it 20 times, you do a mile. There's also a fitness center. It's a small fitness center being a small ship, but it certainly has a good range of cardio and weights. There's a spa as well, which does the usual things, hairdressing and various spa treatments. 
There's a boutique, actually quite a big boutique, which sells clothes, famous regional pearls, various toiletries, and it has a lot of souvenirs that you can also buy in the shop. There's actually a very small library which has books in different languages, French, Dutch, English. It also has a medical centre. What it doesn't have is a guest laundry. So if you want to send stuff for laundry, you have to send that away. It's not, there's no guest laundry on board. Let me talk about the cabins. There's a wide range of cabins from owner's suites right down to portal cabins. So a big range and choice. The main type of cabin though are balcony cabins. So I was cruising in a balcony cabin. I was in cabin number 714. It's a good sized room. It has a really comfortable bed, which is actually a queen-sized bed. A lot of the cabins actually have queen-sized beds rather than twin beds. You have you have a very nice balcony. You have a good bathroom actually, which has a bath, so a shower in a bath. And then one of the new innovations it has is an interactive TV. Now on the interactive TV, you can do things like watch movies on demand. You can order room service. You can also watch various things about the different ports and you can actually book your various excursions through the television. So the balcony cabin, really great. I really like my cabin. There are actually eight different grades of cabins. You've got two owner suites, you've got a grand suite, you've got two different grades of veranda suites, two grades of balcony staterooms, and then window and portal staterooms. So what about entertainment on board the Paul Gargan? Now, most of the entertainment is focused around what is known as the Le Gargans, they are a troop of Tahitian ambassadors and entertainers, and they actually run most of the entertainment and the activities on board. And that could range everything from some dance classes, it could be water aerobics, they can also do craft demonstrations, and they also do a number of song and dance shows, really of course focused very much on the traditional French Polynesian music and dance. But they will be around the ship at all times, they will pop up at meals, sometimes singing songs, wishing people a happy birthday and they will also be key hosts at things like on the private beach in Bora Bora or the private island Motu Mahana they pay a key part there so they are the real heart and soul of the entertainment on board of course bringing the whole French Polynesian experience to life. There will also be a couple of other things which are held in La Grande Salon which is a big theatre space and this is where you will have not only Richmond lectures but it's also where you'll have evening entertainment. Evening entertainment could be the Les Gargans performing, there could be one of the big highlights which is the crew talent show or the band which was actually the Santa Rosa band when we were on board they would perform some tribute shows so relatively low-key entertainment. They do also bring on local entertainers. So one of the big things that normally happens on a cruise is you have a big Polynesian evening one night and they'll bring on board local entertainers, musicians and dancers. Most of the entertainment is relatively low key. So there'll be a band on board, there's a pianist on board. So a lot of it is around socializing and mixing. So you don't have big production shows, you don't have big guest entertainers. The entertainment is much more linked to the traditions and the culture of the region. A couple of things you need to know if you're considering the Paul Gauguin about the ship and the way it operates that I think are really important. First of all, it, certainly like on the Society Islands trip, all of the ports were tender ports. So none of them are where you're docked. And so that means you need to be relatively active and comfortable getting on and off the tenders. Now, because most of those are within lagoons, it's very calm, so you don't have the big swell. So it's relatively easy to get on and off. The dress code on board is pretty informal. And in the evenings, all you're asked to do is follow a sort of a smart, casual or country club casual look, which for gentlemen means collared shirts are asked for. They don't have to be long sleeve, but certainly collared shirts, slacks rather than jeans. But certainly you can't wear scruffy jeans. You can probably get away with a pair of smart, dark jeans and equivalent, of course, for ladies. So relatively informal dressed code. The onboard currency is the US dollar. And in terms of plugs, it has both US style plugs and wattage and European style plugs and wattage. So you don't necessarily have to bring adapters, but it's a good idea if you want to make, take advantage of all of the different plugs on board. In terms of onboard language, it's both English and French. So announcements will be made in English, followed up by French. All the documentation is available in either English or French, or in some cases, multilingual. So very much it's an English and French operation. 
Pogagan, it's a small ship, it's a luxurious ship, it's very much designed, the ship is designed specifically to operate in French Polynesia. If you want to find out much more about the region, I have lots of other videos, so why don't you go and watch one of those videos right now and discover more about Port Gauguin and the French Polynesian region.